Hi there, Pi ladies. My name is Chelsea Dole. I'm a data engineer, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about understanding Python memory management. So first, let's understand what is memory and what actually manages it in Python. When we talk about memory, we're talking about random access memory, or RAM. This is used by applications for your computer in short-term fast access storage. We're specifically going to be talking about CPython, which means that it's the generic implementation of Python where the interpreter is written in C. There are several other versions, but if you Google install Python, this is the one that comes up, and it's most generically implemented. In the CPython memory, in the CPython implementation, the Python memory manager is the part of the code that handles allocation and deallocation of memory used for objects in your programs. What that means a little more specifically is that it handles creating a variable where the data goes when you use a data structure or put things in it, in a dictionary or a list, and also using a call stack frame. So in the scope of a single function, when you um, reference variables and use data structures, and then you return it, and they all go away. So let's understand this a little more deeply by looking into what happens when you create a variable. A variable is really just a label for referencing an object in memory. So let's say I want to create a variable called test, and I want to assign it to the value of 1,000. So the Python memory manager has exclusive access over something called a private heap. This is just a section of memory in your computer, which is exclusively for Python's use. The memory manager looks at this and says, OK, um, let's assign this spot in memory to have type int value 1,000. Currently, the reference count is 1, which we'll get back to in the future. The ref count is one because we have one variable, one label pointing at it with the value of test. What happens if we want to create another variable called another test? So the Python memory manager gets a little clever. Instead of just duplicating that value and then having repeats, instead we actually have just another label pointed at the same place in memory. And if you look to the right, you can see that now ref count is two because we now have two labels pointed at it. That ref count thing is really Python's way of tracking the number of labels that reference an object in memory, which you'll find out why that's important very soon. You can increase ref count by creating more variables with that value like we just went over. You can also use it when you put things in lists or dictionaries or really any data structure. You can decrease the ref count by using the del command. What the del command does is that it disconnects the word or the label that you use for your variable, in this case, test, with the value. So the value still exists there in your private heap, but test just no longer points to it or anything at all. And you can also, of course, reassign the variable. If I reassign another test to be 2,000 instead of 1,000, then 1,000 has one fewer things being pointed at, having pointed at it. So what happens if we decrement, 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 and then suddenly ref count of 1,000 in memory is now zero? The Python memory manager immediately deletes it from memory because if nothing's pointing at it, there is no use to keeping it around. That process is part of what Python's garbage collection system is. Garbage collection is a term used in computer science in many different languages to refer to the automated memory management technique used in the source code of a language, including Python, to free up memory that's no longer in use. In languages like C, Memory allocation is actually done manually by a developer. This is a pretty intensive process. If I wanted to create a variable called test with value 1000, I have to first set out some space for it, figure out how much it is. Then I utilize that in my methods or my functions. And then when I'm done with it, I have to manually deallocate that space. There's no garbage collection, meaning there's nothing going on in the background. There's no C process that takes care of memory for you, even in the least bit. It's all manual. Python, on the other hand, uses dynamic memory allocation. In dynamic memory allocation, memory is never managed directly by the developer. It's instead allocated by the Python memory manager at runtime. This is garbage collection. It's when it happens in the background, because in Python, you never have to say, OK, I'm going to take this spot, and I'm going to fill it with this variable, and then if it's too big, I'll put it there. It's all handled for you. Each of these systems have upsides and downsides. For C, the source code is faster and uses far less memory. Because remember, when we were creating test, we have the um, data type of int, we have the value of 1,000, and then we have ref count. So ref count is one of just three things that we're storing on every object in memory. And if you have thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of items in memory, 
then actually, you know, one third or one out of three items in each object is your rough count. If you don't have to store that, it's a lot less overhead. On the other hand, it's very bug prone for developers. If you've ever heard of um, like memory overflow or um, issues around that, then those often come from memory that isn't deallocated properly. For Python's side, the source code of Python and CPython is much more complex and it uses more memory because of the issue I said before about one out of three items being ref count. However, it's much easier for developers. Developers don't really need to have any knowledge of memory at all, actually, because it's all just taking care of them for them. However, ref counting is not the only method that Python uses to take care of garbage collection. There are some legitimate situations where ref count might not delete items that should be deleted. Specifically, this can happen in circular references. So if I've got two items that have ref count of one, but each of the references is pointed at each other. In that case, they're never going to be cleaned up by um, ref count because they have a positive ref count. But at the same time, um, there's no real way to access them. There's no utility for them. Things like this are covered by Python's secondary garbage collection method, which is a generational mark and sweep algorithm. What this means is that Python under the hood keeps track of all objects with ref count above zero by age in three buckets. Each of these buckets, when it reaches a certain size, has an algorithm run on it called a mark and sweep algorithm. It runs on that generation, and if there are generations younger than it, it runs on them too. What happens is that first thing, it checks all the objects in the generation bucket, and it marks everything that's reachable or good. Then it deletes everything that's not marked, meaning it's unreachable, and maybe it had some ref count oddity that didn't allow it to be deleted. Finally, when it's done, it promotes all the surviving objects in that generation to the next older generation above it. Through this process of reference counting and also generational mark and sweep, Python takes pretty good care of all the memory related concerns that you could want while using it. I think it's pretty interesting how the language's choice to manage memory is really a major functional and philosophical choice by the developers of that language. For example, if you compare C to Python, um, are you preferencing speed like C or ease of use for developers like Python? Are you re preferencing clarity of source code like C also, or clarity of the actual language syntax that developers use every day? With Python, I personally think it's really interesting because Python chooses to maintain a complex and relatively slow memory management system internally. But they do this because it enables Python to be the simple, beautiful, and readable language that it is. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I had a lot of fun making this, and I also learned a lot myself, and I hope that you did too. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me at chelseadoll.com or just give me an email. Thank you. Um, or just give me an email. Thank you. Wow, very in-depth um, research that uh, Chelsea actually made, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I I would love to um, get uh, Chelsea up here. Chelsea. Hello. Hi. Hello. Swadika. <laughs> so um, I was wondering, how long do you actually take to prepare this talk? <laughs> So funny, funny story. Um, I initially put together a lot of notes for this talk to apply to a conference um, about a year ago, and the con it would be it was supposed to be a forty minute talk, and it got accepted, but then the conference was canceled because of COVID. So I did most of the research on this um, probably about a year ago, and then I revisited it more recently. So a lot of time altogether because. Um, a year ago, I really didn't know much about Python memory management, and I really wanted to learn more. And that's what got me to do the talk um, research initially. And so I revisited it for um, a couple hours to make this, but I did a lot more work last year. <laughs> right. So I was, you will say total, how much time do you put in, put in, in this, uh, this talk? Um, this, for, for PyLadies, probably um like four hours maybe five hours but a year ago probably a couple of days wow <laughs> because 
That was intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope it, I hope it was not was not too intense. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> no, um, maybe you can um, send us a private message on the link where you could actually share the slides, and we could actually put yeah. that on a banner. So um, yeah, the people who I'm actually to. want to 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 go back and read a bit, because I see a lot of information right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would I'm love to have the link. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, after we finish talking, I'll send that to you. Um, sure. I'm also happy. I like. I have a lot of notes for myself, and there's a lot of really good articles and documentation about this that I learned a lot from. So I'm happy to share those as well. Mm -hmm. So, one question: um, Why are you in Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> why am I in Thailand? Um, well, I. <laughs> Funny story. I mean, I I work I work as a data engineer, and um, I had the opportunity to do some traveling and be supported by my company, and so they were able to support me coming to Thailand, which is great. That is amazing. When you have a yeah. company to actually support you for for whatever reasons where you want to go or what you want to do, yeah, you just grow. You just grow. You can just yeah. You feel comfortable to be where you are. We'll maybe mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that later. Thank you, uh, Chelsea, for for us. Let's go ahead for the next talk, and we'll talk to you later a little bit more. Uh, Sounds good.